What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Panda here, and today we are playing some Watcher of Realms. Now, you've probably already seen a video from me about the Wasteland tie-in in the Immortal Codex, but I wanted to share another one, and the reason is, is because I've been doing a lot of testing, and I think I found a really good strat for people to use who are missing some of those key components for the Wasteland Titan. And so I wanted to show you what it is exactly that I did in order to get an S ranking, um, which has so far been securing me uh, this top 20% uh, spot. Uh, right here. Now there has been a couple days where I've been able to push it to top 10, but it does take some RNG. So I'll of course continue to do it until I try to get top 10. Um, but of course, it's going to depend on your roster. So this is the team I'm taking in nothing has changed. Um, and you'll see here that I'm only actually using five healers. And that's just because my account doesn't have another healer that's really built that's worth using in this situation, right? I do have some other healers like I have Lily, for example, but she's not built, um, you know, and and like, it's just it, I don't have very good options, right? So I do have some good options down here. I have all of the really good epic healers and I do have Gwendolyn, which is very, very good for me. But I'm going to go ahead and play through an auto fight so you can see and I'll kind of walk you through how I got to this point. Um, so one of the things that I was trying to do was I was trying to keep all of these statues alive. But I realized that in doing so, I was splitting my focus too far for the healing capabilities that I had. So what I decided to do was I tried to focus down on just keeping these three in the middle alive with an attempt to keep the other two, one to the right and one to the left alive leaving us with five total. So what we ended up doing was actually stacking our healers into a little bit of a better positioning here. Well, you'll notice the top right and the top left Ionas are very, very rarely alive. And the reason that this is, is because we're keeping these five in the middle alive for much longer period of time, which means that they're active a lot longer. What this also does is it also allows us to stack up our healers so that they're all within range which allows us to do a couple things. One, it allows us to proc Euphoric Orb on everybody, which means we're getting a large attack speed increases. We're also using Nisande. Now I have my Nisande at A3, but if you don't have Nisande at A3, you can only really heal the people that are within her range. Um, I'm sorry, not heal, but uh, you can only give them the attack speed buff if they're within the range. Once you get to A5, that changes a little bit because, or sorry, A3, that changes a little bit because she just gives it to everyone on the field no matter what it we no matter no matter where they are um but what this allows you to do is proc a lot of different things so i'm going to show you real quick the healing meters you'll see here we actually got a new record today um and let's look at the hp and you'll see nisande is insane right she was doing pretty good before but by having everyone stacked up she's doing a ton more healing we're also getting Madon to basically do the damage reduction on pretty much everybody um, so they're surviving a lot longer so we're getting more healing overall which is really good but i want to show you kind of the the thought process that i had when i was doing this so i'm looking at my nisande right and i'm seeing this mythic artifact the elysian epitaph okay and this increases the healing effect single target by three percent for every ally present in range stacking up to four times this means if you have at least four allies in range you are getting what 12 percent increased healing which is insane and guys i have several of these right i have one here i have one on her so i'm getting a lot of healing not only that, but we're also, like I said, we're able to stack the euphoric orbs, which means we're getting a ton of additional attack speed on all of our healers. And I happen to have two of them. So I am getting 60 attack speed, right? For 60 seconds, which is crazy. I'm sorry, every 60 seconds. My apologies. Um, so we're getting a ton of extra healing by doing it like this right? Um, and personally, I think that this is really, really powerful. I also think that I'm actually missing. Oh, no, because Nisande has my fifth. My, my apologies. I forgot I was on Nisande. Uh, but yeah, so we're able to get a ton of extra healing this way because of how we're placing. So I'm going to go ahead and do one real quick manual run just so you can see how I place things 
etc. So the first thing that I do is I take my Nisande and I place her right here. The goal of her being here is to just heal these main four that are in her range, right? Then we're going to take our Hollow and we are going to place her like this. This is going to keep these three in the middle alive, also keeping Nisande in range. Then we are going to take our Midon and we're going to face her right. This keeps these four main and all of our healers in range. Then we are going to take our Gwendolyn and we're going to face her left. This again keeps those four in the middle and all of our healers in range. And our Vortex is going to face down. Same thing, guys. This keeps all of our healers and those four in range. And that is exactly how we're doing it, okay? <clears throat> I'm also not using any of my ultimates in this first phase because I want to make sure that all of my ultimates are up once we get into the first zone. And then literally what I'm doing is I'm just staggering the ultimates. So as soon as we get into this phase, I'm going to pop a couple of the ultimates, wait a little bit, pop another couple of the ultimates, and then I'm just going to hit the auto button. And I'm going to let them all go exactly how they need to go. So we pop our Gwendolyn here. Then I'm going to pop my Vortex. Then I'm going to pop Nisande, and then I'm going to pop Hollow, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop Midan, and then I'm just going to click the auto button, and I'm going to let it go. This is how I've been doing it, and this has been working really, really well for me because we're just pumping a ton of healing into these four main Iona statues, and so we're losing the other three relatively quickly, right, because they're not getting a ton of healing or really any healing, right? They get a little bit of healing, but not really a ton, and so because of that, they're not up very often however we're having almost a hundred percent uptime on these middle four which means we're getting a ton of damage onto the boss which is really where we're getting the bulk of our damage from now if you have the other healers right for example if you have the eloin specifically you can cleanse multiple people by having your Madon in one area and your eloin in the other then the strat is different because you're able to keep those anti-healing buffs off of your entire you know all of the statues but in my situation i only have the one cleanser and so this is the way that i'm able to get the maximum amount of cleanses out on my team while keeping a ridiculous amount of healing being pumped into my whole team and all of these statues. Um, and that's really how I've been doing it. And I think that if you're in a similar position I am where you have only Midan or only Eloin, heaven behold, you have Eloin but no Midan somehow. But that's kind of the strat that I've been using. And you'll see it's pretty consistent. We do end up hitting you know, this S mark pretty consistently. Now, of course, you are going to probably lose some healers along the way, right? We've lost Hollow already. There goes our Nisande. There goes the rest of them, right? Um, and so obviously, the, at this point, it's going to be all dependent on your gear of what your actual score is going to be. Uh, but I think this is probably the best strat to use if you don't have those sort of meta legendary healers, right? Uh, and again, we're going to look and you'll see Nisande is just pumping out those heals, probably one of the best healers for this game mode really like in my opinion um especially if you don't have those legendaries right um but yeah, guys, I, I mean, I'd really like to know what other strats you guys are looking. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my Dasande just so you can see her gears. Not even that crazy. I don't even have a plus 16 on here. In fact, here, let's we'll do this for you real quick right here. Give me a good attack. Let's go. Come on nice so now she'll even pump out more healing which is just crazy um but yeah i mean i think that my my build is pretty good um for my healers um uh, my nasande is in a pretty decent set in my opinion right we've got a lot of attack speed a, a little bit of healing effect but a ton of attack right we're hitting that 15 almost 16k mark for attack and some decent rage regen not a lot but a little bit um but yeah i mean i i think that this is probably one of the best strats if you have nisande and you haven't built her highly recommend getting her i even went ahead and put a soul stone into her because i had her at a2 i put a soul stone in her to get her to a3 because this additional 30 um attack speed for just everyone on the field is really powerful um especially when you're you know putting that onto healers because their attacks is how they heal right so very good um a5 is actually pretty good as well um because i th believe mania is uh the attack speed right so um pretty good pretty good because you have the chance to uh proc that mania 
whenever you cast the ultimate. Uh, so you get even more attack speed, which could be really, really powerful as well. Uh, but I don't currently have the copies and I only have one soul stone and I don't really want to use it on her right now. So ultimately though, I mean, I really think Nasande is one of the best healers. Even if you have some of those other legendary healers, having her there for the attack speed buff is really powerful, right? Because she's just giving a ton of attack speed to all of your other healers on the field if you have her A3, and even more attack speed to the people that are within her range when her mania passive triggers, which is really, really good. But guys, let me know how you're doing in the Sands of Wrath with the Wasteland Titan. I'm really looking forward to hearing your comments down below and seeing the strats you're using, the champions that you're using. If you have one of those sort of rare champions that uh, some other people don't have like for example Yonomia I'd love to see them in action let me know in the comment section down below how you guys are doing if you liked the video make sure to hit that thumbs up and if you want to see more content from me in the future make sure to hit that, th that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when my content goes live that's it for me today guys I'll see you in the next one peace